Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Uh, I rise to support the court motion moved by the Honorable Member from Mahotiba, Charles Marngar. Uh, the reason I rise to support this motion is I want to highlight some of the issues pertaining to my constituency, where Maulai, as a constituency, locality, it is growing day by day. And therefore, there are these new areas of settlement. Like, for example, in Maulai Moyong Um Japung, uh, Moyong Rim, some parts of uh, Molai Nongkwar, Molai Um Thlong, and then we have uh, Molai Mokan Ro, the full stretch passing through these, uh, this Molai by bypass, and then Molai Motuar Um Sao, and many more, where in these new areas of settlement so far, there is no electric connection. Uh, and the main reason why people are still yet to be electrified is because that there is no electric pole in these areas. And therefore, I will uh, urge upon the Honorable Minister in charge of power to kindly look into these problems that are being faced by the people at the ground level. And another point that I would like to raise is, uh, again, coming to Molai. It is not just one of the, in fact, the biggest constituency in the state in terms of uh, the number of voters, the population, but at the same time in terms of area. And I've learned from the people that uh, in the last few years, Actually, there is a plan to open up one additional billing center uh, near in Maukanro, in Nehu substation. But for the reason best known to the department concerned, they have not gone ahead with this uh, proposal. So I will request the Honorable Minister to kindly look into this matter so as to ease the problem of the people from these areas, from uh, Kanton Masar, Mauro, uh, Maukanro, and Mautawar downstream. And another problem that uh, actually is being faced by the people in my constituency is what the Honorable Minister had also just, uh, the Honorable Member, senior member had just uh, mentioned, is frequent power disruptions, even in my constituency, which has really uh, disturbed the people, especially uh, uh, the women who are walking in their home. And one more last point that I would like to draw the attention of the minister is uh, with regards to the problem of uh, Home Guard volunteers who have been deputed with MECL, who have been working with the department as uh, Home Guard volunteers for more than 10 years, some of them more than 20 years. And I would request the minister concerned to kindly look into their problem uh, and by regularizing their service. So with these few words, I will resume my seat. Thank you. Uh, Charles Ringro, please. So I also rise to support the court motion raised by the Honourable Member for Mawati regarding the style of functioning of the power department. <coughs> so uh, la last year, after I was appointed uh, <coughs> as the chairman of the PSC, the report was stabled and it had come to our notice that the report of the Accountant General regarding the functioning 
and the style of the PSUs of the state were in a very uh, poor, uh, depicted in a very poor light. So we decided PSC to call some of the PSUs and on top of the list was the MECL. From the office we decided first to speak to the officials of the MEPDCL to explain to us as to why that the report of the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, which was tabled in the House here last year, showed that the net worth of the MECL, which is the distribution, transmission and the generation, was minus 2001 crore which is a huge amount, it's minus, which means if the government decides to sell the corporation in all its totality for even a rupee, we would be still earning, saving 2001 crore. That was the net worth. However, after interacting with the senior most officials of the department, we could see that there was, there is still a light at the end of the tunnel, still a light. Because of the new policies which the MEBDCL has been starting to adopt. Now this I'm talking about just a few months ago. And we could see that the intention of the MEBDCL is to make sure that whatever power is being bought at any rate, they will sell it at a rate equivalent or more to the public so that the loss is not incurred there. But to recover what has gone, that's a different picture. We'll not got get into that, sir. And the reasons why one question was raised by one of the honorable members is even when rains are there, we still have to have power cuts. And then the explanation was given, and I think the honorable chief minister also had in his reply answer that because of the power that we had brought earlier, we have to bank it now and so that we have to give it back. So there's still less power. But overall, I am uh, of the opinion that the MEPDCL has the intention to make sure that the people of the state do not suffer from power cuts. Generation and transmission parts, I don't want to touch into that. Now what happens is, when we demand for a augmentation of the transformer that is in the village, because the load which, is, which the transformer has cannot cater to it anymore, then the answer we get that MEPDCL cannot do it because we have no schemes, therefore we have to just grin and bear it or wait for the central government schemes to come, there they will change the transformer or enhance the strength of it from 200 to 500 kVA, whatever the case may be. Now the point here is, sir, which everyone faces, even with a single household or a institution, when a demand goes, a request goes to the MEPDCL to give us an estimate of what it will cost to set up a 500 kVA or 200 kVA transformer in a particular area. <coughs> Sir, I have said this personally to the minister also, in fact, and even to the officers, why do you take five months to give one estimate when you already have the rates of all the materials and the components that are required to be included in the estimate to set up a transformer in the particular place. Because rates don't change every day. I agree. You may have a, you may have to change the rates every year, every financial year, or every six months, whatever the case may be. But these are all standard operating procedures. But they take five months to give it because, first of all, the junior engineer will come, go to the site, inspect it, and see where the LT line is. And they decide, oh, you require so many poles, this, that, make a report and goes to the AEE or the area in charge. 
that goes through multiple tables till it reaches the table of the director of MEPTCL. And by the time it comes back to you, five months has elapsed. My point is, sir, you have to make money. This is one way of making money. Because when we ask for a transformer or general public ask for a transformer, they are paying not only the cost, but even the installation and other add-ons which are there, which is profit to the MPTC. That's one part. Sir. You go and then you go and pay the fund, the estimate, the amount which has been estimated. Again, it takes three months for the transformer to come after you've taken my money. Now, how do you justify this? So this is, I don't know what to call it, sir. It's whether it is, uh, they take a long time to calculate. Huh? Like. Huh. Or probably they don't have the no with all. Huh? No current. <laughs> No, sir, maybe we may have, we are laughing and joking, but it is happening. Even our, we have not paid, I understand, you can take your time. I have paid you the money. The general public has paid yet to shift the pole from here to here. <coughs> we have to bang on their doors 24 hours, <coughs> then the lo local public will come to the representative and say, see this has happened. Then the MLA has to call the junior en engineer and say, why are you doing this? So this has to be expedited. And to prove that you have the intention of improving the power scenario in the state, whereby the people don't have to go through this load shedding and all this, Give it to us in one month. The estimate and the installation. And I would want the assurance of the minister in charge that he will make sure that this will happen in the future. So you go and buy any vehicle in the workshop, uh, showroom, you ask for estimate. Before you've sat on your chair, they've given you the estimate. That efficient. Let that efficiency also come with the MEPTCL. And I'm sure, like I said, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. <coughs> we want to see that light. Thank you, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, I rise to join with the mover of the cut motion, Sri Charles Marga. Interestingly, sir, when I stand, the light has gone. This is a backup. I want to make only two points, sir. Why do the, the MECL, when there is a new habitation, not a new village, in Kasi we say Kadong Thumai, when there is a new habitation, when people ask for electricity, the department comes and tells the people that they have to pay for the poles and everything. Suppose that new habitation requires seven poles. They ask the villagers to pay for the poles. Are we not, or is not the department that should provide those poles? So we want to be clear on that. Number two, the second point I want to raise is, I won't take much time. The irregularity, rather the delay in serving the bills to the villagers. A monthly bill of 500 rupees, everyone can pay. But if you serve them, after 10 months, it becomes 5,000. 5,000 is a big burden for villages. They don't have cash in their pockets. And if they don't pay, they come and cut the line. When they go and plead in the office, please restore my line, they say you pay first. From where they'll pay? But at 500 rupees every month, everyone is willing to pay. So I want this simple, simple solution, sir, so that our people will not face hardship. Thank you, sir.